All right, welcome back. Feeling Your Passion podcast with a, I can't pick favorites, but as far as legacy and me growing up watching films, sled necks, everything, Cody Borchers, you were my favorite athlete growing up. And we have finally one-on-one Cody Borchers in the studio. Nice. Well, I'm glad to be here, David. It's fun catching up with you. Um, my first interaction with you was actually in the backcountry of uh, Revelstoke. We mm-hmm. did the heli shoot there. 2015 already. You were just a little grom hiding behind the camera taking photos and just uh, the old time stoked there. So. Can you believe it's going on the latter half of a decade ago already? <laughs> David, I, I, I definitely feel it. <laughs> You know okay. I mean? Okay. Yeah. I, you kind of already alluded to the the mystery, the million dollar question. Uh, Cody has never told us his age, which is sweet because if you're 50, if you're 40, <clears throat> either way, you backflipped a couple years ago. So that's sick. Uh, maybe you were a 45 year old guy backflipping. Maybe you were a 47 year old guy backflipping. I don't know. Either way, it's awesome. And the fact that you have kept it a secret down to. Your X Games bio has the age blank. <laughs> there's never, I've never, there's never been a time where I've felt to write out any information that should dictate yeah. who you are, at what age you are. For me personally, it doesn't matter how old you are, whether you're 20, whether you're 50, you could be 55. Why let age hold you back? It's all where your head's at. Why, why have that stigma in your own mind to being like, I can't do this. I'm too old. Right. You're not. You're never too old. We, we all have time. We all wear that invisible clock. So let's enjoy every day we have and, and, and just, just be out there, enjoy it, make yeah. the best of it. And why let that exact same thing, like just as I said, and the more you think about age, the more you put that stigma yeah. on yourself, the more you drag yourself, oh, I can't do that, I'm too old. I'm like, right. you know what? Today's the day I'm doing it. Or yeah. today, maybe I'll just pass on that one. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I feel... Along the road with all the injuries and everything else that I've ever incurred, you know, it was just getting back on my feet and getting yeah. back doing to the fun. I, I, I love the reason why. I fully support that. But it, it's comical now that throughout our te- our team, <laughs> yeah. people in the industry, it's become this this joke. Um, you know, it's like, who can figure out how old Borch is? Absolutely. There's an article out there in Mountain Sutter Magazine, I think. It doesn't say when the article was written and maybe it does, but you reference something of being when I, back when I was 16, but there's no reference of 20 years ago when I was 16, <laughs> 10 years ago. Like you're so you tiptoe around it so well that we've like Kelly and I spent probably an hour one day digging deep online. Nothing. No, it's, it's incredible. You've kept it off the, you off know, the- generally in the morning, I feel probably about 1957. <laughs> It's about what I feel about for the first 20 steps of yeah. every morning. Yeah. But by, you know, by midday after a couple of borch lattes, of course. Ah, the best. Oh, they're so delicious. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm feeling probably at least 1997. Okay. Could be right. younger. Depends on the day. Yeah. You know, depends yeah. how the cloud shines That's through. That's not bad. 97 is not that long ago. But borch, um, for those who don't know, you should know. Cody, you're, you're kind of one of the OGs of the sp- Sledneck's five, six. Your yeah, what, what was your premiere kind of part? Your your first. Mm. Hey, here I am. This is me. Got a full segment. Yeah, uh, nailing it down to that time. I want to say Sledneck six. It would have been the okay. end of it. I got so a oh, small four oh five era. Possibly, kind of like. yeah. Uh, okay. I never know what year it is, but I just remember the numbers. Yeah. Um, I was on a, a Polaris at the time. Yeah. Um, the guy I really looked up to at that time was Jay Quinlan for yeah. many years. You know. Yeah. It would be amazing to get that guy back on a snowmobile for uh, just fun sake and and whatnot. But Jay was always something I looked up to, so I had to have that pro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, that would have been my introduction to sled next there. And then, um, and then from there I switched to a skidoo the next year. And then that's yep. kind of when I popped out. Yeah. Uh, how, but, what got you into it initially? Cause you don't just overnight show up and figure out how to huck a sled. I mean, I know some guys do there that era. There was a lot of guys that didn't really know what they were doing besides going fast and, and break tapping occasionally and hoping for the best, but you still had to put yourself out there to get noticed by these guys. Like where did that finally did something trigger you like, I think I could maybe start filming and getting some footage and doing this. 
you know, it all started watching the videos. Yeah. That's why I'm so sad to see them all go. And many of conversations that we have, David, I'm we just go back like, and forth oh, on it. the social media of every day, everybody <laughs> needs content. I get it, but it also loses that, um, that touch of exclusive. This feel. could be another conversation afterwards. So that, that began my addiction to wanting to try and figure out how to get into snowmobiling. Mm-hmm. Um, Dirt bikes were fun. I never grew up in a household that had dirt bikes, snowmobiles. We didn't do that. My dad was into softball. My mom was into, you know, basketball, the traditional kind mm-hmm. of school sports. Um, there was just always something that drove me towards wanting to chase adrenaline. Um, so that moving forward, a really good friend of mine, Mike Michael Chuck, he was a pro snowboarder at the time. Um, some may have recognized the name. He moved to Pemberton, BC. Uh, we, my brother and I, we had started working on the rigs so we you know started to make some money and that's drilling rigs for mm-hmm. for everyone um we started to make some money and and realized that i could afford snow be like put it <laughs> in the back and um off we went we chased that got into golden bc um it kind of started closer to home in the wipers area it was just um kind of meadowy riding into cut lines and things yeah. like that my Foot brother hills. and i just yeah so yeah. my brother and i you know, pushed each other and me being the younger, you know, the younger brother, I always had to try and one up my brother <laughs> at any given moment. I think that's just uh, the nature of the beast. And then from there, as I was saying with Mike, Michael Chuck moving to Pemberton, I helped him move out there and Dave Craig, I don't know if you guys recognize the name, but Roops of Hazard mm-hmm. is, is the videos that he has uh, had started. And I obviously one of the videos that was in my collection from probably, yeah. you know, Roops of Hazard yeah, one yeah. and so on. Mike had a connection already out there. I had found Dave's number, called Dave, and we were just sitting in Mike's yard. He's got an acreage just outside of town, and Dave answered the phone. I was like, hey, Dave, my name's Cody. You know, um, would really like to connect with you and come ride with you. My brother and I are just in Pemberton, and we're good to go. We're solid riders. There would be no pulling skis. Don't worry about it. We'll just, yeah, just want to come out and have fun. He's like, if you could be at McDonald's in like 10 minutes, you can come. <laughs> oh. <laughs> On our way. <laughs> just drifting out the driveway. Some sliding into the McDonald's. <laughs> like, yes, we're here. That escalated quickly. Yeah. yeah. And he took us on. We went up to, uh, went up to Rutherford. It's a very famous area in Pemberton between uh, Pemberton and Whistler and BJ Murray happened to be there. Oh, oh sick. I was like, BJ Murray? Yeah. BJ Murray at the time, there was BJ Murray, Rob Elford, Jeff Kyle, mm-hmm. Jay Quinlan, you know, many, many that I looked up to. And, and those boys being in BC right there, that yeah. was the draw to always go to Pemberton to Whistler because that's kind of where the scene was when it came down to the filming side of things, especially yeah. for the bigger stuff. I was just blown away that BJ was there. I was like, yes. And it was a... Troublesome. Have he, have he flipped at that point yet? Or is Not that, yet. That was no pre-flip. Yeah, okay. That's right. Yeah, he would. That's when the rev was just coming in. Okay. That was like yeah, oh yeah. three, oh yep. three and a half. So that day was kind of troublesome. It was kind of in and out of cloud. It was really tough seeing, but um, yeah, just just being me at the time. Uh, there was nice little left-handed hip that I found, and I was just goofing around, just being myself. And I didn't really know at the time, but my brother was sitting with with uh, with Dave, and he's like, "Does your brother ride with like this all the time?" He's like, "Man, you should see when he can actually see." <laughs> so that kind of <laughs> snowballed the the start of it. Then you know, at the end of the day, we were the typical guys of always having uh, you know, couple couple uh, we used to call them parking lot parties. Yeah. So we'd always have something chilling in the chilling in the snow at the end of the day or in the creek, whatever it was, if it was spring or whatnot. And uh, David, he was just like, I think you should come tomorrow. We're going to keep riding. <sighs> All right, here this we go. It. This is it. Off we went. And uh, that snowballed into staying on with Dave and I kicked off a part with him. And we um, off we went. We went to Alaska, I think, that year mm-hmm. together. I um, was very uh, blessed that at the time I was making good money so I could jump yeah. on these road trips and so it kind of happened quick like mm-hmm. just a little bit of a dream and then right time right place and then obviously you had the skill set to back it up but you aligned yourself with the right people and kind of saw the vision there happening potentially and hey if i just meet this guy and chat with this guy maybe we can get with the right people here and Absolutely. show them what i got 
just take it on a whim. And I was like, I'm going to make this phone call. See if, yeah. can, see if you can take me somewhere. And then it went from there to, yeah, so the next six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, you did how many years in that? Well, right till they shut down. So I've yeah. been to, what, 19? 18, 19, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I missed a couple of years with injury. Obviously, there was quite a bit yeah. of injury for sure. But kind of a unique story of starting with sled necks, and this is how it happened. I love so I, this stuff. I'm so like, again, I, I just like hear <laughs> eye contact with you because I've known you forever, but you're like one of my good buddies and you crash at your house, but I still go, this is Cody Porchers. I'm like, I watched every segment and give me the behind the scenes of what happened. Absolutely. Um, so being with Dave, you know, it was just, just trying to get on the gas, trying yeah. to, trying to meet p- different people and, and hoping that we could cross paths with, you know, a little bit better riders. And just that, that's what I think it really came down to was just wanting to surround myself with, with, a, with better riders, bigger train. I could only go so far with the buddies that I was riding with. Mm-hmm. I love my old buddies all to sake, but there was just a time where I kind of had to take that next step. And, and, uh, my brother kind of stuck with me. And, and, uh, so to the point where I connected with, with, uh, sled necks. So was riding with Dave. I used to make all my own hoods for my Polaris because that was like a big thing. I was mm-hmm. always into weight saving and I don't think it'll ever leave me. I keep, <laughs> keep trying to always yeah. just save a, save a pound here or yeah, there. Cause yeah. when you come crashing down out of, you know, midair, it, it all helps. So my hood was broken. Dave had just was like super ants in his pants because the boys were going up Rutherford again. This was now some months later. And, um, he's just like, we got to go up there. We're going to meet Rob. We're going to meet BJ. And, they're building a jump up in Rutherford and it's like, okay, okay. So he jumped on my deck with me and up the, up the logger room we go. I was like, okay, I just have to fix my hood really quick because it was all broken and held with duct tape, you know, just trying to make red green proud at the time, but that was not (laughs) cutting it. So he was, I can't wait. I can't wait. I have to leave. I said, okay, no worries. You know, you know me, David, I'm pretty patient, man. I was like, yeah, no problem. I'm pretty good with direction. Always have been pretty you know direction for me was always you know if you're leading you're always trying to find new you know new uh symbols along the way landmarks or something yeah you know when you get to a crossing you wait for your next guy to come before you move forward yeah so i said dave just tell me what i where i gotta go give me landmarks and i'll meet you there just so he told me you gotta get up to the rutherford cab you gotta stay to the right You'll come up to a gas drop. Well, I had never been that far because the previous ride I had been with them, it was cloudy. We didn't even right. make it. Oh, so you have no, no. reference. Yeah. I knew where the cabin was. We yeah. made it to there, but that was it. Going to make it to the gas drop. And then, I don't know, we're going to be somewhere down there. <laughs> that's, that's pretty vague. Okay. All right. <laughs> so off he goes. I was at least probably a half hour behind, you know, patching up the hood, doing some fiberglass work and whatnot. <laughs> Some on the more, logging road some more red spray paint to make it look good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or in my own mind i thought it looked good <laughs> it's good from far <laughs> one more sticker over top yeah, of that yeah. it, was, it was perfect so off i went hit the cabin okay go stay right go on the right and back then i don't know what it looks like now it's been many years now but there's some really big crevasses so you got to kind of you know tiptoe your way through and mm-hmm. i just kind of stuck to the main line where all the trailer tracks were because it was a beautiful day out come up to this really tall hill and big long bench and all of a sudden, there's just all these jerry cans. Got to be the, gotta gotta be be the, the gas, gas drop. drop. Yep. Well, better top up here and leave mine here too. <laughs> and I could see way off in the distance. It, they look like little ants on the side of the mountain. I was like, well, I'm going to stop there because that's like the first group. Yeah. Off I went. Probably took me at least, you know, five, ten minutes to get to them. They were really far. So I get there and cruise up the hill. I'm like, oh, there's Dave Sled. Sick. They're here. All right. I, didn't, I found them. So I get up there and. Rob Alford was there, BJ, um, Jeremy Hankey at the, at the time, and, and uh, a couple of filmers. And I was like, hey, guys, do you mind if I help out? They're like, yeah, yeah. So I just start shoveling. They had just thrown down the first blocks. This, was this for Slednecks? This is for yeah. Slednecks. Was, was this Moriarty up there? In or no, no, no. So at the time, Corey, Corey Jones yep. was the filmer for Slednecks. Yep. Um, Hefe was there as well. And... Uh, yeah, so we just start chucking these blocks on. We make this massive wedge, and it's over a crevasse, right? So I was like, huh, this is pretty hefty. But behind <laughs> us, there wasn't much of an in run. <laughs> so I was racing motocross at this time uh, in the summer. So, you know, I mean, I felt pretty comfortable on, mm-hmm. on, 
on the handlebars and, and knew what my sled could do anyways. It was nothing special. It was just a, an 800. And I, it was a 121 when I bought it. I stretched out to a 136 and I went with the, with the X, I think it was at that mm-hmm. time. Could it be like the nice Pro suspension? Yeah, it was yeah, a Pro yeah. X, right? Whatever Quinlan rode, I, yeah. I bought it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we build this thing. It's massive. And I was like, all right, so who's going first? BJ's down below and he's just like riding around and Dave's like, well, I think, well, BJ's going first. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm like, well, I'll go warm my sled up too. So warm my sled, come up and in there, like down in the valley has got to be, you know what I mean? Like, you know, five, 600 yards down to where this jump was. So I kind of took the shortcut and just went up there and then I was just hanging out. Rob pulled up and we're hanging out. I was like, so who's going to hit this thing? Like BJ still hasn't showed up. It's been a couple of minutes. Rob's like, I don't know. I was like, can I hit it? He's like, you want to hit it? Was, New guy. I was like, yeah, totally. You got, do you care? He's like, no, I think he was more happy to watch me go first. Yeah. yeah. He's he like, Oh, it. thank God. Yeah. Let this guy just <laughs> smash his face off the bar. Let the duct taped hood go. So I was like, Rob, come over here. Help me. Cause he kind of like had to like pull back to this other crevasse that was behind us. It was kind of a goofy little in run. Like it wasn't much. It was more 30 feet before the start of the wedge. And the wedge only had to be maybe 20 feet long. No like roller into it to gain speed or anything. It was kind of just a, I was just, I walked up to the edge and chucked a snowball as hard as I could. I was like, well, step down. I don't know. At the time probably was at least 50, 60 feet. So crevasse was probably 50 feet wide. So kind of had to like, yeah, yeah kind of had to get up and over it. And, the, and then it, once you get over, it was a nice roll and the roll was forever. So I was like, well, I guess I gotta, <laughs> go something. Gonna find out. <laughs> you know, I looked at Corey. I remember I was just like, give him the thumbs up. I highly doubt he even understood what I was even doing. <laughs> just going to put my goggles back on, started my sled. And I was like, well, here it is, man. That, that. Yeah, off I went. I was like, yes, <laughs> boom, land. I was so excited. Yeah. Just full pin all the way to the bottom of the valley, race back up. Rob's still sitting there on his sled. I was just like, you aren't going to go or what? And I didn't even give him a chance, man. I just like rolled right up to where I went, pulled my sled back into line. All of a sudden I see Corey waving the sled next film around the time. He's like, are you going to go? And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, just wait, wait. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's like, okay. And I just like, again, yeah, I just cross rutted it and jumped off so I wouldn't land on my own ball yeah. and, and that was it right there. Next time I rip back around, BJ's still not there. Rob's like, wait, because I was going to jump it again. Yeah. I was not waiting. I was just so fired up. Just session it now. So yeah. fired up. I was around yeah. these guys excited, you know. And Is that yeah. clip in? Sled next yeah. six, five, so six. You'll, so I've, now that we're moving into our new house, I've been picking out through all the all the all the the photos that we have. Yeah. And Corey sent me the actual. So back then we used to film on sixteen mm-hmm. millimeter cameras, right? So they, uh, that was the only photo that I would have ever had from this jump. Right. And he sent it to me, and there happens to be a hair in the in the actual in the reel, oh. and it's crazy. So I was like, I don't really care, man, because this was my. This was my this was step. Day. This yeah. was this was the jump that led me to where I am today. True. Wow. And uh, so I we cut it up in three pieces. It's really fun. I, I put it on my stairs, but I'll put it in my garage this year. And and um, yeah, that you know, is so awesome. I got to see that next time. Sessions with it, and at the end of the day, again, you know, <laughs> the beer was cold, waiting at the truck, yeah. and and uh, it, the boys were just like, "You coming tomorrow?" It's just like, <laughs> yes, I would love to. So, did you guys? realize i mean it was catching on at that point but i i personally feel like sled next eight era was probably like the peak of of fan base all of that did you guys realize that there was this massive fan base growing like in the midwest and east coast because i've talked about this before in the podcast we didn't have any mountains right so we'd watch these movies and just live vicariously through you guys and all of a sudden you become superstars i mean it was the same thing as watching your favorite skateboarders snowboarders whatever it is the unobtainable like you know i can't do that we can't do that with what we have around us but these guys do and we're just gonna sit here and enjoy every second of it and then i know heydays was going on at the time and everything but did you realize there was a point where like oh this is getting big because there's not now i'd say there's almost more 
of a fan base because people are a little more aware of what's going on via social media on the West Coast and the mountains here. But when there was none of that, like, did you sense it was catching on out there? Was there parking lots where there's guys that go like, oh, my God, that's Cody Borchers. That's that's Rob Alford, you know? Was that, like, starting? Or was it when you finally went, like, to the Midwest, did it kind of be like, oh, we're kind of big? I don't. Yeah, I would have never... Just would have never thought that. that yeah, as far as like rolling up the parking lots back in the day, there was so many less people around, mm-hmm. right? So we were always trying to. It's kind of like the I'm big in Japan thing, you know? Like, did right. you realize you were big in like the Midwest? Um, is what I was kind of getting at. Wouldn't have known. And, and the only time that I did know, so when I started riding ramps and I went out to heydays, and that's. So you got pulled over. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, many a times. But <laughs> yeah, so. At the time then would have been heydays coming to do some freestyle stuff yeah. is when I realized there was, there was like groups of, you know, younger guys that were just like, Holy, Hey, that's Cody. I was one of them. And then some guys would be just like, just stand there and stare at me. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, I'm real, man. You want to touch me? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm real. You want to shake my hand? Like, I was just a happy guy. Just loved yeah. to ride my snowmobile and didn't understand the, the type of influence that I had at the time. Right. And, and I guess for, Everyone out on the east, they just wouldn't have had the experience to be able totally. to ride the mountains. You guys got back then, got good snow, but still. You had to drive 16 hours to see the mountains, yeah. And you were you were no different than I was. You guys probably bought all the movies, oh, wanted yeah. to see all the segments, and just like on rewind. Just yeah. replay, replay, replay. But we never got to go ride the terrain. So it was just constantly like, one day I'm going to head west. And I'm going to keep watching these films versus, yeah. you know, guys in the west. Just another, another weekend to get to go out and cool, that was sick, but let's go ride now. And they get to go out in the mountains. And yeah, I mean, it was every kid in school that was into motorsports watched Sudnecks growing up. Sure. Yeah, fair enough. I, I, as far as it went for me, I was just, just tried to be humble. It was just uh, really, you know, great, uh, grateful for the type of riding I was, you know, yeah. exposed to. And, and then, you know, just followed that, that passion. It's heydays 08. Uh, you and I have talked about this before. <laughs> what you just said well, Evan, my buddy Evan, who's now part of Sea Boys. Okay. He and I. That's awesome. Like, this is actually a really funny full You're circle. You're probably one of the group that were. That probably. Were, that, that, that that's, the, that's how the story ends. This is a full circle story now. So yesterday, two days ago, we had Spirit Week here at 509. So awesome. So Tuesday or Wednesday was wear your oldest 509 shirt to work. And then whoever had the oldest one, whatever, just, yeah, you win. <laughs> and I wore... The Evolution T from 2008. Right. So even Scott, who's been working here longer than me, I beat him because he didn't really know about the brand before working here. So he had like a 2013 shirt on. Mine, I bought at Heydays 08 from Tom. Oh, nice. The same Heydays that Evan and I saw you walking into the freestyle show and we went, we started tapping each other on the shoulder. I'm like, you say it. He's like, no, you say it. Like, no, you say it. <laughs> and Evan just quickly goes, Cody. And that was it. And you turn back and you kind of look around and we both go yeah. wave <laughs> and you go, sup dudes. And we're like, Oh man. But that's like, now that's I think awesome. about that, saying that to you, buying that shirt there, I still have the shirt to this day and now work here. It's just full circle. Like we were those kids. I mean, that's what we, we all thought we were going to be jumping and flipping sleds one day. That didn't, that didn't pan out for me, but yeah, jumping, them. you're having <laughs> yeah. fun. Being in the industry, you know, like yeah. your passion drove you to follow it out west. Totally. And um, led you into being around. Oh, I have no complaints. The series yeah. or, you know, the, the scene and, and uh, being a part of it. It's it's awesome. Right. It's cool that, 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 that back then that would have been, this, this is where I was going, you know, before was talking to you about all these videos that, that made us wait every week. You know, wait mm-hmm. till the fall, till these these videos got released right before winter, and you'd just be just can't wait till the till the shops brought in yeah. the new videos. And my parents are out visiting right now; they're going to be here for the event Saturday. Ah, and nice. uh, my mom was just telling Tristan the other night about she'd have to pick me up from school when the new Sudden X DVD come out and drive me to Duluth, <laughs> which is like twenty five minutes from where we lived in Minnesota, and go to this one dealership that had it. And buy it that day. And then she said, just repeat, and repeat, repeat over oh, and yeah. over and over. And yeah, I mean, that's what it was. It was just cool to see. 
I totally agree with the the hype of the release. I do miss that. But I don't know. Also, there was something special about that time frame where guys were kind of test dummies almost. Nobody had pushed the limits yet, so you never knew what was going to be. Not saying there's not cool stuff now, but there was tons of firsts constantly year after year for about five years there. Guys trying new, well, they're double drops, combining lines, building new jumps, figuring out how to whip these things, figuring out how to flip them, flip combo. Like the evolution in that era was so fun to watch because it was growing so quick that the next year's film might have put last year's to shame just because it evolved so fast. And that was such a cool few years to watch. And that's where you guys became just higher and higher and higher. Stacking up there. Yeah, and then you came to Minnesota, and a bunch of us just stared at you. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And that was the fun part about shooting segments that you were you were given. You generally tried to make something with you know anywhere from two and a half minutes to three minutes is mm-hmm. kind of what you were trying to put together. So you you would take that from the beginning of the season was a bit of a warm up because it usually takes you a bit to get going, just back comfortable, wait for the snow to be there, you know, as it as it stacks up and just feeling comfortable that that little hump is not going to actually destroy you or your snowmobile. So it was fun to to take what you've already built on, just kept building. So that would make you push harder and harder. Yeah. And uh, really fun to work with, you know, the the filmers over the time. And and uh, it, it was fun. It was super good. I, 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 I still feel that there's a bit of that going on now. Yeah. You know, you got um, Turcotte kind of doing his own thing. You got, um, you know, Bergmark bringing yeah. out his big five. And, and, and I respect that. I think that that's something that we should still kind of do. I think that the, the media stuff is great. It's good to have on, you know, mm-hmm. your weekly basis. But... Um, still kind of have that that hidden that hidden little agenda that you got just brewing because it's it's exciting yeah. it's fun to uh, <laughs> still have the excitement yeah um, I got we'll move to present day here I sorry I could talk about you or to you about old sled neck stuff for hours <laughs> but I do have one clip in particular I kind of want to hear about so it always stood out to me because it was unique it was fun it was a thing at least growing up in the Midwest I would be in the back seat of the car and I'd stare out the window and I'd look at the ditch and I'd have this imaginary snowmobile going over driveways, you know, just constantly imagining, oh, what if you could jump that shed over there? And sled neck seven or eight, maybe even nine, I don't know. You jump out of the ditch and jib onto the top of this little yes. shed, but it's like sniper. It's like four feet by four feet and you barely so awesome. hit it. What the hell happened there? <laughs> like, were, were you thinking the same thing? Just looking at the ditch, going. I love, I love hearing the story about you just in the back seat. Yeah, um, you know, just looking for snowmobile tracks, looking for things. Could you jump that? Yeah, just, that was no different than me. Right, that's all I ever did. I'd go hunting with my dad. We had an old suburban, and we'd just cruise along. My dad would just be so stoked to hunt, and I'd be so stoked to watch the distance for tracks. And yeah, things to jump. So that season. Um, uh, I filmed that with, with uh, I think, Dave Craig, actually, and Corey Jones was there. It was kind of a collab with the two of them. And we went to Stewart, BC. It was a really challenging season in Whistler and Pemberton. We went out that way, and it was kind of the first time going to Stewart, BC. And if any of you guys don't know, it's kind of really only one road in, and you get to ride into Hyder, Alaska, and that's where we were trying to get into, but it just kept snowing and snowing. <laughs> it was one of the, my first experiences of it snowing two meters overnight. Yeah. It, no joke. It we were almost too deep. It would, we couldn't go anywhere back then in the day. Yeah. You would blow a belt just trying to get up the trail <laughs> while those sleds were, <laughs> yeah. you know, the rev or the, it was just, yeah, the other rev just was, was challenging. And so we were trying to think for things to do. We're driving around town and obviously those were all the, the pushed up piles from just yeah. in town. So we were just cruising around and I had spotted, it was like an old shed that was out there. I was like, I can jump that. I can definitely make that. Would I over jump it? I don't know. So they had just freshly plowed the road, so it was icy. So mm-hmm. we kind of took a bit of time. I packed on a, a trail where my 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 uh, my track would make some good traction, so it wouldn't spin the whole way, and just basically use the use the snowbanks as a berm and just a little half pipe. Yeah, just teed it up, and 
I, oh, it was so close. When I was in the air, I was like, I'm over jumping. That's this what thing. I, it looked like your skis barely <laughs> touched. <laughs> it was, it was wild. And I was like, oh boy. I, <laughs> oh, just stay with it. You're always generally better to stay with it. Throttle so, down. Yeah. And I like, right when the skis touched down, I was just giddy inside my helmet because <laughs> it was just like, I could see just a bit of snow in front of my skis and then boom, bounced off. Yeah. Of it. yeah. I wonder if some city worker drove by and looked at that track and was like, what the <laughs> hell happened here? <laughs> Really cool little fun time. That, that was a really, really neat little town too. And, and uh, I, I'm sure, it, you know, it's all it takes is creativity. I, I love that. Those, those shots like that stood out to me. Um, like Quinlan where he jumps that kind of like drainage ditch dam. Oh, man. And he has to bail because yeah. there's no outrun. That was so rad. Just the creativity in that kind of urban assault almost. It was more snowboard film kind of mm-hmm. stuff, you know, mm-hmm. where they're just getting creative with different trannies near and around town. Yeah. And for me, that's what drove me into getting into a ramp. And, um, because he was just starting with the ramp things, you know, that same season he jumped it. Remember it? Like he tried to jump as high as the tree mm-hmm. on the ones I just watched it the other day. Cause yeah. I always do this time of season. I just look back on all the old fun stuff and just, just get hyped again for the season yeah. coming and was watching some of that. And then seen the, you know, that little drainage one that he jumped and Yeah. Quinlan, did you Quinlan get to ride just, with them or film with them much at all? You know what? I never did get to ride with them, but uh, I was actually in a uh, steamboat. I went down there mm-hmm. and was hanging out with, uh, um, Brown, with Brown and Clayton Stassert. We were down there and, and, uh, on my way back, I was, I needed to connect with a flight and man, I just, I, I gave, uh, well, Clayton was really good buddies with Jay. So he gave me Jay's number. It's like, Hey Jay, do you mind if I could like crash your place? And he's like, opened up the doors. He was just yeah. like, yeah, absolutely. Come on, man. He's, he's a really, really cool dude. Back then he was really getting into a uh, helicopter, mm-hmm. just a helicopter pilot and whatnot. He was still, he was still riding and, you know, going to X games and whatnot, yeah. but uh, it was cool. That would have been my m- most interaction. Never got to ride with him. Always would have uh, loved to. And yeah, yeah, but that was it. It'd be a sweet thing to align. You, you bring him out of retirement. Yeah. <laughs> Go out with yeah. Papa Borch. That's right, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, just a couple of gray hairs out there just having fun. Yeah. Okay, got a hot take for you. How do you feel? As I just watched, <clears throat> excuse me, Tristan and I were in the shop at my place the other day and we were, had sled necks on the background. I can't remember which one it was. You had the green XP. Okay. Um, and your whips were phenomenal. Two, but here's the thing I'm getting at. Back to skis, mm-hmm. almost quarter pipe tranny like. Today, there's a handful of guys doing it, but you see so many panel whips. And there's a good way, I think, to do a panel whip in a not so good way. Which one do you, I don't want to make it, make paint you out to be the guy complaining. Which one do you think is the proper whip technique? I, I, I think in different applications, it serves its purpose. Yeah. But truly, if you want to become a, a whipper, you got to land back. In your, you, you can't do that with a dirt bike. Right. So I always grew up watching dirt bike, all the crusties and all. Like, we all did. You want to whip a dirt bike, you can't just side panel lander. Yeah. That's just never going to work. Yeah, I get that the snow gives for, forgiveness and whatnot on, on some things, but... Why don't you just keep going and just figure out how to land back on the skis and it's, ride away? So it's it, interesting. You don't see much of it now. Mm, yeah. I don't know. Is it just a... Uh, I'm not too sure. I don't, I don't really know how to paint that picture. Is, yeah. it, is it a fear factor of I just getting, getting back to that? Because it, it does take a bit more commitment to, to get it back to being riding yeah. it out. Right? Caleb so. and Brett got some sick ones. Yeah, Caleb really... Kasturki really got some dialed this last season. He did, He yeah. was starting to get him tweaked out there and throttle and brake control and get yeah, it back. Absolutely impressed, for but sure. But I was getting stoked on something, and nothing against Caleb, because I'm super stoked he's doing them, but I was getting stoked on something that was happening 15, 20 years ago. And it's like <laughs> there's a, there was a lull there where it kind of... People yeah. weren't doing it as much. You know, Brett's always been strong with whips. Yeah. Like, he's phenomenal mm-hmm. at being able to lay that over and bring it back. And same with Corey Davis. Like yeah. Some, some really... And those are, like, proper, really not, like, stuff. quarter yeah. pipe tranny whips. Those are, like, full yeah. gap whips. Yeah. And, they've always been really good at the yeah. straight stuff. And, you know, Steve Martin used to be amazing off the ramps and yeah. even in the backcountry, too. So... You know, I, I really encourage the younger guys and I think anybody that wants to kind of, you know, for me, honestly, a, a whip and a straight whip. So off something straight, do your thing, bring yep. it back. It's uh, 
that, that's probably one of the hardest tricks that you probably really pull off. Like backflips, yeah, they're great, but a whip is something that just stands f- out. Just a five hundred pound couch going yeah. through the air. Yeah, absolutely. The first time I saw it ever and thought, "Wow, it's it's doable," was Blair Morgan oh, on the cat. So remember cool. that on oh, West yeah. Yellowstone? Just throw it right side. He was kind of laying the thing down <laughs> for on like a 99 cat. So fun. And I'm like, man, some of you kids these days <laughs> keep asking for sponsorships. Look at Morgan is doing on a 99 cat. Right. 440. Yeah. Stop landing on your panel. And yeah. You might get it. <laughs> <laughs> Should just send him that video. Here's Blair Morgan 24 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Blair was a phenomenal rider and he, uh, he had some iconic moves back in the day there. Remember the Supermans he was doing? Mm-hmm. Stomach like on the seat almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to, I was fortunate to grow up 15 minutes west of Duluth National Snowcross. Oh, yeah. So I didn't miss Duluth for like 20 years. Right. And uh, I got to see Morgan and Hibbert battling it out in their heyday. And Morgan throw some of the Supermans over the finish line at Duluth. Oh, yes. I watched you ride Sludnex Invasion Tour there. Ask, yeah. yeah, dude. I've been. St- yeah, so I've been creeping on you for clips. years. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's probably just your love for the twin pipes. Hey? Uh, nice oh, gas. yeah, yeah, that'll never end. I, we need more twin pipes. Oh, that the 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 uh, modded eight hundreds. They were something mm-hmm. else. I got yeah. my six mod at the house. You'll see tonight. Yeah, we'll yeah. have to take her see, see if we can catwalk it a little bit. Well, it's got about eight ounces of fuel left in it right now. <laughs> oh, that should be enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll fire <laughs> one pull. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Cody, up to now present day, I mean, you've made a, a beautiful life for yourself. You have an awesome family, dude. Thank you. Uh, your wife, we joke, is our, our Canadian mother. Somebody's to take care of us when we're up in Canada. She and, loves and she, doing it. She, she loves, loves doing it, and, and we love making sure we're not a pain in the ass also. <laughs> <clears throat> but you got two great kids, and you're, you kind of made the dream happen the last couple of years. You're in Revelstoke now, in the Mecca of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it took quite a while to get there. I think I, we, we should have jumped on it sooner, but Rain and I were truly the, the, the real version of snowbirds. Mm-hmm. You know, we never went south to the hot. We went we went just west to the snow. Mm-hmm. And uh, every winter we would rent a house or, or a room or whatever, however it kind of worked out. And um, we were in Edson uh, when it all kind of came to fruition. We were, I was working for riders, worked there for six years, and, and uh, just kind of Kebri came into our life and... That's our oldest daughter, and I was just like, you know what? We got to make this happen somehow. I don't know how, but we just got to be. Mm-hmm. We got to be there full time, and and uh, yeah, it took some things to get rolling, but now we uh, we're there full time, and and uh, so Kebri and I and and Rain and I got our place, and we've we built it. We kind of had to figure out how do we subsidize a bit of the income because you know these right. these little towns are expensive to live in, so. We built uh, um, a bed and breakfast in the basement, but now it's switched to an air. Uh, sorry, it was an Airbnb. Now we change it to a bed and breakfast. So, yeah. um, just a part of the, some of the zoning. So it's fun. We've you know opened that up to so many people. We've, uh, we've Such been a plugging fun away spot. at it. Yeah, and then above the garage where you boys always hang out is yeah. is, is the bunkhouse. So wanted to wanted to make sure because so for so many years, me going to the out, out west and couch surfing and just making it work you know right. so many open doors that allowed me to um get to where i am in in, in the career I, I've, I've chosen so it's it was awesome i wanted to give back and try to make sure that there's a there's a bed or a coach i now i try to give people beds so they can ride better the next day not oh, be oh, it's twisted a, up and pretzeled up from the i i from the it's old nothing coach, better but. than going somewhere and you're like Oh, there's six beds. <laughs> we don't have to double up. Nobody has to bring an air mattress. Yeah. It's like, oh, and we have our own bathroom. Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys have built an awesome spot there in such it's a coming. prime location and yeah. Easy to get to town, easy to go riding. And Absolutely. yeah. I'm stoked for you guys. It's it's kind of starting to feel like home away from home when we're up there in yeah. Revy. It's it's we did the hotel thing for years, bunch of random rental places bouncing all over you'd find one you like and then it was booked next time and so you're back to square one find another one but yeah with you guys up there it's just it's been sweet and then i get to stare at all the old sled next photos on the wall <laughs> geek out again it, yeah it's coming you know it's taking us a while it's just the two of us swinging at it um we we built it uh we had a a friend jump on board to help us do it but uh reina you know she she was the 
she was the chief in command making that happen. So it's, uh, we were just chipping away. So you've seen it evolve. You've seen it come mm-hmm. from just, uh, from nothing to, to what it is. So it, it's good every year. Kind of the garage gets a little cleaner with less stuff and yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you just gotta pack your stuff in and make it happen and, and, uh, follow that dream. Cause I think that's what truly life's about. And we made it happen in Revelstoke. It's such a fun town. It gives mm-hmm. so many options. Like I try to explain, and this is truly where, Again, back to the first question of age. It doesn't matter how old you are. There's there's so many different things. Just to give you, for instance, for this town, right? Revelstoke, you got the ski hill. You want to go skiing and snowboarding with the World family? World class. Ah, yeah. Unbelievable. The golf courses are just unbelievable. I don't golf. I just slide sideways <laughs> through whenever I can in a golf <laughs> cart. And the mountain biking is all time. It's just getting better and better. Yeah. And um, Camping around hiking there. Hiking trails, everything. camping, side-by-siding. All these things to just keep your youthfulness at the top, the scale, and and um, you know, uh, for anybody that's interested, by all means, just reach out to me. And, yeah, um, uh, you know, we'll try and squeeze you in for a day and or two or a week, whatever you need, and and uh, just come and experience it if you haven't experienced it already. But uh, yeah, and it, any question, good. you guys know that place inside and out, and point people in the right direction. Yeah, I can't say good. we've ever had a dull moment. <laughs> And, and, you know, dad can bring the whole family, right? And not just saying, come stay at my place. I'm just saying, come to Revelstoke because, yeah. or to any mountain town, just don't let it hold you back because there's, there's ways of being able to let mom and the kids go skiing while well, you can still enjoy snowmobiling. Yeah. And that's like, it's such a great way to just bust out with say some friends, but everybody's yeah. occupied having fun. And then as the kids get older, um, I'm really looking forward to, you know, the girls are, they love their snowmobile. Not so much on the dirt bike, but um, they really enjoy this sledding side of things. Good. I think it'll involve... They're in the right town more. for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. <clears throat> um, other than that, though, yeah, so pr- up to present day, obviously, we, we've continued to film. We did, let's see, up until volume 15, you're still making segments, and then we've tried to do some fun stuff along the way with webisodes, and, and we had a blast in Alaska this last spring. That was a good trip. <clears throat> that was, I haven't, we talked about this a few, few episodes ago with Sane and Lars. They were on the podcast. Right. And I'm like, I haven't laughed that hard in a trip <laughs> in a long time. Like, it's just a good group of people. There's something special about when you get the right blend of people. Mm-hmm. From Steven, um, longtime friend of ours also. Absolutely. Great filmer. And then Sane and Lars are the most happy-go-lucky guys. And then you are as well. And... What I kind of stood out to me the most there is how we had a crap snow day and we made the best of a bad day. Oh, yeah. And that group, nobody bad an eye at it, was just like, all right, we're doing this. Let's have fun with it. Let's uh, make the best of this little town. And, and rather than sitting around in hotel rooms, we had yeah. a, oh, well, it's just that we laughed our what, asses off all day and had such a good time together. That's what trips give you, you know what I mean? <clears throat> just take a left-handed snowball mm-hmm. and we'll turn it into a good one but yeah thanks to you know jeff being able to show us around in those areas and and uh it was cool because that was the first time i ever actually got to ride with sand and then got to ride with his right hand man lars like, yeah he's just such a beauty and uh you know we made the best of what we could in those moments you see an old borch using his wise old gray hair yeah. being like yeah not today carl <laughs> yeah i'll let you guys do all the wrecking well, it was deep that yeah last but day. then the last day oh wow yeah, yeah that's what it's all about and uh, i we all know that alaska has so much more to offer and mm-hmm. you know, we didn't get that alpine day but we didn't yeah, yeah. but there's we will there's many more years to come we will yeah we're getting the band back together this weekend all right sane and lars and jeff are coming oh man we'll see them yeah, yeah that'll be some good times tomorrow so uh for those listening this has already happened by the time this airs tomorrow is our kickoff to winter party if you made it i hope you had a good time if you didn't we're going to do it again next year, and Cody and um, most of our pro team will be here, and you can come hang out with everybody, you know, autograph session, but it's it's casual. It's not like you guys got to do an autograph session from 6 to 6.30, and then you're out of the public eye. It's You're just mingling amongst everybody, so it's a pretty cool opportunity to meet your favorite riders, chat with them, and, you know, shake their hand, and just be able to BS. It's not a it's not a strict environment. It's not like it's Very a big casual set. here. Yeah, it's not a big set schedule. It's just kind of get to mingle with the people that you you watch all the time and and hang out at HQ here. So, 
Amazing to see what 509 has uh, started at and come from. Tom did an amazing job. I remember Tom. I think Tom's coming out too. No way. Yeah. It's always great to see Tom for sure. And, and uh, to just see how it all started with uh, with the pair of goggles and where he's taking it I today. Know, right? Now look at this. I've been trying to get him on this podcast. You, oh, he's like so, he's so camera good. shy about it, which yeah, is he'd funny. He'd be aloof. He'd be like, no. He's no, one of my left and right. really good That's friends, so like the the comforts <laughs> there. Like I'm like, dude, just just talk like you and I are talking, because I want to hear. Honestly, for how long I've known him, I don't really know the beginning stages, like the true, the full story in depth. Mm-hmm. And it's an awesome story, starting with nothing and turning it into what it is today. Yeah, and I didn't really know much what 509 was at the time, and and I remember because I would I would always catch up every spring with Brett because Brett would always be racing, mm-hmm. and um, I actually tried to buy one of his race sleds from him at and one Turcots? time. Yeah, 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 it was super funny. Uh, that's a good story, but um, that's kind of how I started to realize what 509 was because Brett would would go and film with Tom, mm-hmm. and he'd always be wearing these 509 goggles. I'm like, what is that? What is what's going on there? And then um, just as it evolved and, you know, to, to watch what it came from. And then Tom ran into one of my uh, old good buddies and uh, Joe. And Joe was talking about me and Tom was like, you tell Cody to call me. <laughs> 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 Which I think it was a couple of years later. Yeah. Eventually, uh, you know, we all crossed paths and it <clears throat> turned into what it is today. But uh, it's cool. It's yeah. good. It's uh, been a wild ride. I mean... Yeah, Turcotte is the longest running athlete. Yeah, he would be, wouldn't he? And I, I remember seeing the first films wearing, I think, like pink aviators. He always rocked the pink frame and the tattered sled necks gear flapping in the wind, like pants split wide open, you know, and all that. And then, uh, yeah, the outerwear thing. I mean, Bort, you've been with outerwear since day one. And man, has that come a long way from day one. What was that? The cover I landed with 509 was... Uh which one was that? Was that a movie? Was it 10? Is it 10? I don't even know. 10 is the big Right, X I'm on. jumping off that big, like, I come off that, like, a, it's big step down. It's in Jaws, like the backdrop. Uh, I think it's ridiculous. 12? Maybe 12. Is it green kind of the cover? Yeah. yeah. Is it green? I think it's, no, it's white and blue. Wait, oh, oh, oh blue. um. I can't see. 11, I'm, I'm maybe. bad with that. I don't know. You're on the that's poster. Where, that's when you're it all on the, started. I think you're on 11. Oh. No, Tristan's pulling it up. Search 11. That's the heli shoot shot. That's Brett going over the heli on 10. Yeah. yeah. Which cover is it? I don't know. You had it on the last page, Tristan. Oh, was it on 10? Was that you on it? I don't know. Show me that screen again. Yeah, bring that baby over here. This is like my Jamie right now. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. Right there. Down to the right oh, middle. Yeah. Nine. Nine. Okay. Yeah. That's what. Nope. No, the other one. Other one. Oh, shit. Right there. Down right there. There, yeah. There okay. it is. Yeah, nine. Oh, yeah. Is that in Revy? Or was Joss, you said? That was Joss. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was your first 509 film? That was my first 509 film, yeah. The debut. And then that you did. That was uh, Mike Reeves shooting this angle. You did six more of them after that. I haven't stopped. I know. Ain't going to stop. I know. And What's then, holding you back? It's clearly Definitely not age, age. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Cody, it's been, it's been fun for me too. having you from year one in outerwear <clears throat> and your, your feedback too. I know you've sent a lot of great feedback and design. I know you've had Bill over the years and I'm not afraid to tell you what's wrong and oh, I we always love tell hearing you what's it. good. You yeah. know what I mean? Cause I think that that would, it's only going to help. Yeah, I'm like, it's shocking that it survived after year one because like year one's gear is Whoa. not very good. Yeah, to, well, it was the step. I know. know. To where it's gone today where there's just insane tech involved oh and gosh. base layers, all of this. It's, it's, there's only, let's see, UJ Sane. I think UJ and Sane are the originals. Maybe Nadine too that have been with Outerwear since day one. And Turcotte. I can't. I don't think Turcotte was year one. Oh, maybe not. I, I'm not sure. Me know. But has been. Let's see. Winter 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Now we're at 24. Wow. Eight seasons of outerwear evolution. Yeah. And here we are today. With you don't even know what to order anymore. You got so many damn options. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. You guys should make some jeans. You know. Mm. <clears throat> Get into the good story. Yeah. We can't. What? As if Levi's. 
owns the rights, Levi's Jeans, yeah. to anything in 500 series. Dang. So this is an interesting one. Because of that, our snow pants, if you look at them, the tag doesn't say 509 on it anywhere. It's just the five. And the snow pant leg is either the five logo or ride five. We can't say 509 anywhere. Right. So because the mono suit, the pant is connected technically. Right. That's why it doesn't say 509 anywhere in the mono suits. It just says ride five. Because with Levi's jeans, that isn't even a loophole. The mono suit is considered pants as well. So it all just says ride five or five on it. So no jeans to come. No, um, I, I I know. I'm like the man, sweats were awesome. I, I'm like we need some like some sort of black pant, and then I don't have to really go clothes shop anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah. And a pair of shoes. Some cargo. And a pair of shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Shoes. We'll be good to go. Oh, yeah. Five one nine's a shoe company now. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Uh, I love being a part of this team. To be honest with you, how I've watched it grow, watched you being involved from the day I met you to what we are here sitting today. It's um. You keep bringing on new ideas, David, which I think is awesome. And I'm sure the rest of your team, I don't know all of them. You walk me through and got to show me the headquarters. This place is beautiful. Yeah. Um, I know that seeing what is here today makes me more, even appreciate even more what I get to wear and get to be out there on the snow with. Uh, I can see that everybody here is passionate about their whole totally. product and what they're doing. There's all these little key little spots to what what goes on here because it is we one appreciate big it, machine. Cody. yeah Thank it's, you. it's great and um yeah I, i'm excited to see what more is to come because just like the industry is it mm -hmm. just keeps evolving and and every year just better things get to come um the gear that is provided now is just such top level yeah um <clears throat> it is so nice to be able to have multiple choices but at the same time, as you get into the higher and higher end gear, it just gets better and better. It's just Making nice not worrying about that aspect of the day. Absolutely. You don't have to worry about, am I going to get wet, cold, whatever. Yeah. It's just one less thing. You just got to worry about, did you go to the gas station and fill your slip this morning, Cody? <laughs> that could be an issue. <laughs> you definitely did Because when that. we're on the road and I don't get my <coughs> daily Routines. borch intakes, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a combination that really yeah. got to get everything going. And my excitement, I see a J. Yeah. You know, I don't get to see berries that much. And then when he comes to my house, you know, we just get talking. And so, all of a sudden you're at the parking lot and skip the gas ah, station. I'm going to steal yours today. Yeah, I'm going to steal your gas. <laughs> Thanks for that. It yeah. worked out. I still broke trail and yeah. took everyone to a fun time. Right. But yeah, no, it's good. I appreciate it. And, uh, Thanks for keep having me coming back, man. It's uh, it's fun. Look forward to what I can continue to do. I'm not too sure what that'll all just come. I never want to give out any secrets, but it's just fun to be a part of. And regardless if I'm jumping 10 feet to 100 feet, it's just still fun to be a part of the team and, and yeah. uh, be a part of the morale out on the side of the mountain. I think it's important to just uh, keep yourself involved and keep chipping away. Totally. Well, Cody, you're always one of the most upbeat guys to be around. And the jig is up when you turn 50. <laughs> Just because... It's going to be a big celebration. Yeah, we got we to celebrate that. And then maybe you're going to be a 50-year-old guy out there flipping. So then at least we know. Yeah, if I keep up on it every yeah. year, I can definitely get there. At least there. we know, but... I got at least another 14 to go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe anything that comes out of your mouth when it comes to that topic. <laughs> but thank you, Cody, for sitting down. Um, we got a bit of a shindig to go to. We got a fun yes. little dinner with team get together night. And then tomorrow is kickoff to winter party. And uh, yeah, dude, thanks for the time. I'm glad you guys made it down, you and the family. And we will see you this winter. Yes, we will be. I can't wait to the deepest day we all get to incur. If you guys are listening on YouTube, uh, leave us a comment. We try to read every one of them and appreciate everything you guys have for input on who you want to see next or what you thought of this episode. If you're on Apple or Spotify, throw us a five-star review. Um, actually, don't throw us one. If you actually think we deserve one, put it out there. If not, I don't really have much of a rebuttal. I'm sorry if we didn't give if we weren't five-star worthy, but every single one of those pushes it out to more and more people so we can keep bringing you more of these. And we will see you in the next episode.